So far, we have studied transport equations of a scalar quantity. Now, we want to solve a more complex problem, the 1D Euler equations, where u is now a vector. In the case of the 1D Euler equations, our problem reads like this. Here, rho stands for the density, u the velocity, p the pressure, and rho e the total energy per unit volume. For a calorically ideal gas, we also have the following equation of state. Our objective in this video is to solve the shock tube problem using the second order Lax van der Rohe scheme, and we will show that this scheme is not the most adapted to capture discontinuities. Are you ready? The shock tube problem is a very useful test case to validate numerical methods because the exact time-dependent solution can be obtained by the method of characteristics. If you want to know more about this method, I recommend you watching my video. What is the method of characteristics? Application to the Burgers equation. Or even refer to this book, which is mainly dedicated to numerical methods. This particular initial value problem is also known as Riemann problem. The initial solution is composed by two states separated by a thin membrane. These two regions are filled with the same gas but at different thermodynamic states. Initially, the gas is at rest. Imagine now that we suddenly break down the membrane, generating a high-speed flow that propagates from the high pressure to the low pressure side. The gas at high pressure expands through an expansion or rarefaction wave. The rarefaction is a continuous process and takes place inside a well-defined region that propagates to the left. The compression of the low pressure gas generates a shock wave propagating to the right. The expanded gas is separated from the compressed gas by contact discontinuity. Contact discontinuities are surfaces that separate zones of different density and temperature. By definition, this surface is in pressure equilibrium and no gas flows across it. On the other hand, pressure, density, temperature and velocity are all discontinuous across a shock wave. These discontinuities make this problem very challenging for numerical methods. In our computer program, we are going to specify the following quantities. For the lax van der Rohe scheme, the numerical solution at iteration n plus 1 and cell j is computed in two steps. The first one, the predictor, and the second, the corrector step. The predictor step of the lax van der Rohe scheme computes an intermediate solution at interfaces j plus 1 half and j minus 1 half using forward finite differences. These intermediate values are then used in the centered finite difference scheme of the corrector step. Note that the solution in the first and last cell are not calculated. They should be prescribed by appropriate boundary conditions. Since the tube is assumed infinite, we impose the initial condition on the left in the first cell and the initial condition on the right in the last cell in every iteration. This is equivalent to leaving unchanged the first and last components of the solution vector. Meanwhile, it's clear that the computation must stop before one of the waves hits the boundary. This is how it's implemented in the code. Don't forget that all Python projects can be downloaded on my website. You can also test the program using different initial conditions. But for now, let's focus on SOD's problem. Note that the CFL condition is not the same as in the previous lectures, and this is going to be explained in the next video. So here we plot the initial condition, we enter the main loop, we apply the predictor and corrector steps, and we plot the solution. The 
this image displays the numerical results using the Lex Vendorov scheme. Despite the good accuracy in smooth regions, unwanted oscillations appear near discontinuities. Since the information is searched on both sides of the computed point J, the propagation of the information along characteristics is not taken into account in this case. This lack of physics in the numerical scheme is the cause of non-physical oscillations in the solution. In this video, we saw that the lux vendorov scheme is not appropriate to compute discontinuous solutions. In the next video, we are going to see a second method that takes into account the hyperbolic character of the system, allowing a much better numerical treatment. Keep tuned and don't forget to like the video and follow the channel.